Hey guys, Captain Frugal here in the comic room. Yeah, I know I need to do a lot of bag and backing boards and clean up in here. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, but I'm picking out the next issue sec to do cover battle with. So this should be interesting. So I hope you join me for this episode of Cover Battle. Hey guys, this is Captain Frugal reporting for duty for another episode of Cover Battle. And today we're going to be look, going back and looking at an issue, uh, uh, three issues of Supergirl. And this is going to go back when, yeah, this is number one, 1994. Uh, back when they were $1.50. This is actually a four issue mini series. And if you look here, it's going to be written by Roger Stern. Uh, June Brigman is the penciler. So let's talk about June Brigman a little bit. June Brigman. She was born October 25th, 1960. Yeah, somebody actually older than me. <laughs> She's an American comic book artist and illustrator, best known for creating the preteen superhero characters, the Power Pack. Brigman was the artist on the syndicated newspaper Brenda Starr Reporter as well from 1995 to 2011, and in 2016 became the artist for the newspaper strip Mary Worth. So she's a cartoonist and penciler from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, okay. A lot of people know Power Pack, but maybe not the others as much. If you know Brenda Starr, let me know. Well, growing up in Atlanta, Brigman's artistic influences included Stan Drake, Gil Kane, and Walt Simonson. She attended Georgia State University and the University of Georgia. She broke into comics with AC Comics in 1983. A sample Astron story eventually published by AC in 86 earned her a job with DC Comics. In 1984, she worked for Marvel Comics, doing various editions of the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. She penciled DC's Supergirl miniseries that we're looking at here in 1994, following that with 1995's Dark Horse Comics Star Wars miniseries River of Chaos. In 1995, she took over as artist for the syndicated newspaper comic strip Brenda Star Reporter and stayed on until it ended in 2011. In addition, she illustrated as well as colored Where in the World is Carbon San Diego's comic strip for the National Geographic World magazine. Yeah, you know how big Carbon San Diego was. She also illustrated a series of Star Wars novels and Choose Your Own Adventure books, which, you know, that hits me well because I love Choose Your Own Adventure books, so I probably read a lot of those and didn't even realize at that time it was her art. She returned to Marvel in 2010 with a new power pack story in Girl Comics number no. 3, teaming up with Simonson once again. She also penciled two issues of Herc in 2011. For DC, she penciled Convergence Superman Man of Steel issue 1 and 2, and Convergence Infinity Incorporation number 2. And and in 2016 to 17, she created several variant covers for different Marvel series as well. Also in 2016, she became the artist of the Mary Worth newspaper comic strip. As a teacher, Brigman also worked as an instructor at the Joe Kubert School of Cartoon and Graphic Art. In 2018, she joined new comics publisher Ahoy Comics as a penciler and cover artist for Captain Ginger. In the very next year, she returned with Simonson again for a power pack one shot for Marvel. So she's had a lot of experience. So let's dive in to these covers. All right, now that we've talked about June, let's actually look at the covers here. We have this one, look at this. I, I like to say, you notice she's not, you know, a lot of people complain about female characters and how they're depicted in comic books being overly built. Well, you don't see that in this one. She's definitely very feminine, but look, she's not overly done. <laughs> not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with that, but you don't really get that here. And it makes sense, she's Supergirl. She's flying above the city of Metropolis, and I think the background's done nice because it doesn't take attention from the character. All the attention is put on the main character, and she's drawn really well. She's drawn like she's not too young, but not too old either, fitting Supergirl. I think this is a very nice cover, but let's look at the next issue and see what we think of that. It is none other than number two of the same series. We're only going to look at two of the four, because that's how we do it with three unless we find that we want to change it at some point. We have here this one, but notice the change to Supergirls. It's because of all these clones or whatever, if you will, there. I don't want to get into the story at this point. 
but look at this cover here. You know, no, I could, I would think that they were drawn and just recopied so they didn't have to draw everyone every time. And it looks that way to me either that or they're really, the uh, June is really good at redrawing the same thing over and over again, just in different sizes. But I'm guessing she was smart and just resized it. But uh, another eye catching cover of what the heck is going on here. Um, I won't say anything super jumps out at me. <laughs> Little word play there, but still a very solid cover. She's drawn very, very well. Look at the, the expression on her face, everything. It's quite fitting. It's, it does really well. It's a serviceable cover. So now let's look at issue number three. And this one definitely shows a lot of anguish, uh, a lot of facial expression there. Inside out, it's called. It does, once again puts all the attention on her. Something's going around. Look at something in the background. All eerie. Another nice addition. Drawn really, really well. The proportions are well. And what I mean that is sometimes you know you get an artist who draws heads a little too big, maybe, or or the arms are too long. But this one, perfectly fine. I think she's very proportional. She's not, once again, overly big in certain areas or small. Definitely fits the character very well. You know, I really like how she's been drawn here. I like how she's drawn here a lot more than I have the last few years in DC. They just haven't had an artist, sorry about the camera there, <laughs> they haven't had an artist that has matched, in my opinion, the quality that June's done in a long time. All right, with that said, let's do what we do. Remember, cover battle, we put out three and you can only pick one. So imagine you go to a comic book shop, you've only got enough money in your pocket to buy one issue. The question is, what issue do you buy? Now granted, I understand it is a four issue series and you'd probably want them all, right? And so you wouldn't buy just one, you'd want to get the whole thing. But what, we throw that logic aside. We say only get one. We're Highlandering this thing, right? So you could only get one story aside and you're doing it based on just a cover. You can't flip through the pages and look through it, though I will say the art throughout this book is very good, okay? But in this case, you can't flip through the pages. Just once again, so you look at some of the art here, yeah, pretty good. All right, but once again, it isn't about the art in the book, which isn't the best. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's serviceable. It's pretty good, as I said. It's not the best art I've ever seen, but it does the job. But we're looking at covers here. So with me, I I would go first. To, my eyes would gravitate towards two of the covers. We have one, two, and three. I would gravitate towards one and three. Hmm. So one and three, I'm already gravitating to. One is a nice introduction, makes me see the character. Maybe if I didn't know anything about her or much about her, it might be a good catch eye catcher to me. But if I was going just by the cover alone, which is the goal of this, right? Just the cover alone, I think I'm gonna have to go with issue number three. Yeah, because three just, it shows that, you know, there's something going on, there's anguish, there's passion. And the thing in the background that I don't wanna get into, I recommend checking it out for yourself. Uh, just adds more interest, more intrigue to me. I want to know what happens in this issue. And that's what a good comic book cover should do. It should make you go, wow, what's going to happen here? I you get a glimpse into the story and you want to get it. Nowadays, sometimes they're very misleading, let's be honest. But this one isn't. It does a great job of that. really captures my interest and attention. And it makes me want to read it. So my choice would be issue number three. But hey, don't just take my word. I want to know. This is a community thing. What would your choice be? If you had to go in there, would you choose issue one, two, or three? Leave that in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Which one would you choose? And if you don't mind a little bit about why. Or you can say, no, Captain Frugal, you should have picked this one because blah, blah, blah. That's fine too. It's civil, kind, fun discussion. I would love to hear your thoughts. And it's one of the best ways to help this channel is comment. If you find yourself enjoying this content, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get to join into more of these. I do a lot of these cover battles. Uh, they don't always get the most views and that's okay, but they're a lot of fun. They're community builders. That's what I'm trying to do is have fun with the community. If you find yourself in a good position to help out the channel too, and you want to help me with these, you can join our Patreon for as little as $1 a month. That gets you special videos. We also have Subscribestar. You can use that too. You get special videos that only you would get in that group. They're supporting the channel as well as I do special background music. Yeah, so I'm putting music on the channel. I have a page there. I re up. I put every time I put a new song on, I add that to the list where you can go on, click on that, and you can use that music in any way you want. Ringtones, so you could use it for that, just to listen to if you want to, or if you make videos, put in your videos. You don't have to worry about getting a strike. I made sure all that's taken care of. I own all the rights, and I give you full permission to do any of that that you choose with that video. 
All right, well, thank you so much for your time. And until next time, keep it brutal.